The cytochrome C fold or domain that is very common in uh, organisms that have to do with respiration or so. And they frequently bind metals or in this particular case a heme group or something and this heme group binds say iron. That without going to, into too much detail um, that typically means that they can be responsible for electron transport meaning that they can help oxidize or reduce processes and convert energy. It happens a lot in mitochondria in our cells uh, and also in several bacteria. I've actually worked on uh, one of these uh, called Chevanella onedensis. It's a bacterium discovered at Lake Oneida in the, the late 80s, which is very special. This organism, at least at the time, contained more cytochrome domains that, uh, than any other organism known. And this is a bacterium that only has, say, 4,000 genes or so. This is probably prescribed now, so I can say that we wrote the research grant at the time that we promised the US military to study this, mostly because we were so interested in the metal binding domains. Um, it was kind of true. We were studying this because we were interested in fundamental protein folding. Um, that it's a great example of an organism that's small enough that we could try to predict virtually all its structures. The reason why both the US military and several other agencies are interested in it, it's a metal that kind of it's a, it's a bacterium that kind of eats metals or binds metals. That means that it has interesting roles in, say, bioremediation. You might be able to get it to absorb metals related to nuclear waste. And what's happened the last 10 years is that there is a lot of newfound interest in Chevanella onedensis and bioelectricity. Bioelectricity, what's that? Well, I can essentially get a bacterium to perform electrochemical reactions and I can design those reactions with biotechnology and get it to adhere to surfaces and everything with far greater precision than you do with a traditional battery. This is still work in development and there are a few recent papers that I'm going to try to share at least one of them with you in Canvas uh, so that if you're interested you can download it. But to avoid spending too much time talking about Chevanella, these four helical bundles in the cytochrome C domain is particular because you're binding something inside that bundle. And here is yet another example. This does not look quite like a four helical bundle, right? There is quite a lot of diversity in the cytochrome C folds too. And again, we tend to group them together evolutionary, but this one looks much less four helical ideal than the one I had on the previous slide. That's life. We have to accept it.